So it's, uh, it's definitely my honor to be here. Uh, I'm excited to be uh, amongst what I consider to be my community. This, uh, the hacker community is sort of where I grew up and where I learned everything that I know. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Uh, but I have to say this, uh, this idea of hackers saving the world from the zombie apocalypse, right? The first time I saw it, I, I just laughed at this thing. You know, because honestly, I mean, think about it. This is not how it goes in the movies, right? I mean, in the zombie movies, the zombies almost always win, right? I mean, if they don't win, they screw everything up so royally that there's like no hope for anybody else, right? And in, and in the movies, the hackers always screw things up, right? And make the world miserable for everybody, you know, and break stuff. I mean, hackers don't help, and the zombies always win. So I, I looked at this thing, and I was like, come on, you guys got to be kidding me. Right? It's like some kind of publicity stunt, you know, bring zombies in and everybody's just going to ignore the fact that you've thrown out this you know, impossible situation. But the more I thought about it and the more that I kind of looked at this tagline, the more that this thing grew on me. Um, I, I just started thinking about it and I talked to some zombie experts, my kids. Uh, McKenna and Trevor, and we sort of talked about it a little bit, and uh, we settled on this one resource, and it was the Zombie Survival Guide, as, as kind of the compendium of, of worldwide research on the zombie apocalypse, which obviously, according to the author, is inevitable. And as I read through this book, I found some really interesting things, and one of the things that, that grabbed me was uh, Max Brooks put together this survival checklist. And this is the survival checklist. Basically, you start at the first, the first phase is get food and water, right? Gather together supplies, get the, the basic resources that you need for survival. Get a secure base of operations, a, a place that you can stay, sort of an outpost, heal your injuries, get to work. The next phase is to sort of join together with other people, other survivors, uh, connect with them. After that, you, you start learning and growing. Your skills improve as you connect with other people. And then finally, if you live long enough, you get to this, this point of sort of fulfillment in your life, and you're, you're starting to turn the tide, you know, to get the planet back to where it was before the hackers, I mean, the zombies screwed it up, right? So this was, this was very interesting to me. And when I read this, I was grabbed just by this idea because really it reflected something that was already going on in my life. Uh, back in 2007, Jay mentioned already, uh, I went on my first trip to Uganda. I felt that God was calling me to go there. I didn't exactly know why. I had a great career, all that stuff. But there was something in Uganda that I sort of had to check out. And on that trip, I discovered that there was a need for technologists, for hackers in developing countries, in places that didn't have those resources already, Places that you didn't even think there were computers, there was a huge need for repairing computers of volunteers and helping with infrastructure and all that. And in 2007, I found out that for the first time in my life that hackers could actually help, that hackers could do positive things. And I, I mean, I always sort of knew that, but I wasn't able to convince anyone else. Uh, and so in 2007, I started hackersforcharity.org. What I'd like to do is I'd like to try to convince you that hackers can actually save the world from the zombie apocalypse. That's going to be my challenge. Thanks, Jay, for throwing that out there by making that the theme. Uh, but it's my, my goal to sort of convince you that that's going on. I want to present that in a series of rounds. So round one uh, was not 2007. It was 2009 when I moved with my family to Uganda. And I really found the, the situation there, the environment, to be decidedly post-apocalyptic, you know, first of all. Um, the infrastructure was obliterated. People were living in poverty. Uh, I mean, you can just roll into the town where we live and start shooting footage and, you know, put a dark filter on it. You're like, oh, yeah, this is a zombie movie <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, and our journey there that first year in 2009, when we decided to spend a year there, started at the very beginning with finding food and, and uh, water, basically. I mean, you can't just go to the tap and drink the water that's there. You can't really even boil it. You have to figure out, you know, how do I use filters? You know, how do I create safe drinking water? You can't go to the supermarket and just pull things off the shelf and cook them up. You can't get your meat from this aisle and your milk from there and 
all of that stuff. You have to go into market and find vegetables that are safe and wash them properly. And you go to the butcher, which is basically a clapboard, you know, little closet with raw meat hanging on it and flies all over it. You got to make sure the butcher isn't using the rusty machete when he hacks off the hunks of meat for you. It was a challenge. And we also gathered supplies from missionaries and other expats that were there to, you know, sort of just basically get started. And of course, what goes in must come out. Um, yes, that's actually a Ugandan bathroom. And this was a big problem for me. I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Uh, I, I have sort of high standards. You might want to call me high maintenance. I don't know. But, you know, to me, a bathroom has to be, you know, soundproof. And... Uh, relatively odor proof, um, has to be comfortable for long stretches of study. I mean, this is, might be too much information, I don't know, but I, I had very high standards. And even this fit into the sort of zombie theme because uh, this was rule number three for uh, zombie land, which of course is beware of bathrooms. So you can see the, the zombie theme is, is kind of already moving here. Uh, the next thing that we had to do is we had to secure a, a safe place to live. Um, there's there isn't a lot of violent crime in Uganda, in East Africa. Uh, it's, that mostly it's crimes of theft. You're, you're living within a stone's throw of people who are in abject poverty. You know, and if, if you're living in a place and you have something that they can grab and sell to get food to survive, I mean, to a certain extent that, yes, it's a criminal act, but from a moral standpoint, who can blame them? So we, we had to figure out how to secure where we lived. Jeremy Zarechak put together a Kickstarter project to actually help us do a documentary on Hackers for Charity. And the documentary is going to be out soon, but I had him put together this clip of what it's like for us when we sort of lock up our house. So let me give you this video. Check this out. Right, so show of hands, how many people have gone to bed and forgot to lock the house at night? Show of hands. And, and you made it, right? You survived. So when, whenever that happens to you, think about us in Uganda. You know, so this is sort of what life was like. Now, for one of the things that we did once we got a little bit settled and we sort of you know, found a safe place to live and figured out how to get food and water and all that was we just started moving around the community to, to learn a bit. Uh, one of the things that drew me in was Ugandan classrooms, typical Ugandan classroom. This is actually not a bad classroom. Uh, they, they do have walls and a ceiling. Some classes are pretty much under you know, a tree. But we saw that Ugandan classrooms and the education systems needed a lot of help. So one thing that we did was we started bringing in computers that first year. And uh, you can see in this photo, we brought in some donated computers that were donated by the hacker community, put them into classrooms, and kids just went nuts for these things. I mean. This was, you know, you can see them like leaning over, you know, three deep trying to see this computer. Most of them had never seen a computer, had never touched a computer. This was extremely exciting for them. And you can tell from this photo, that is a really old piece of crap computer. <laughs> you know, it's running like Windows 98. Don't get me started about the security implications there. It wasn't online, at least. <laughs> but they were super excited about this. But what excited me even more than seeing the excitement of the kids was the fact that I didn't do this on my own. It wasn't me raising, you know, you know, paying for this from my salary. Actually, what it was is hackers made this happen. The hacker community made this happen. 
Tell me that's not staggering, <laughs> right? So that first year was very interesting. Um, and if we go back to our zombie survival guide checklist, the first year was basically about our survival, right? You guys helped us find food and water. I mean, you paid for our existence as a family to be over there. The hacker community paid for this. When I walked away from my job, we really didn't have savings. We didn't have money saved up. I wasn't independently wealthy. The hacker community floated us so that we could do that. Also, we were able to find a secure place to stay, find medical facilities, find work to do. We were able to connect with other people in the community, expats and missionaries, like I said, to learn from them. Here's what you do and don't do. But we really didn't learn a whole lot. We were basically keeping our heads above water. And we certainly didn't grow in any way, and we certainly didn't get to that top level, you know, which was fulfillment. And we really weren't changing the tide of what was going on in Uganda. So basically, what we decided to do, and this is, uh, you know, let me take a break here before we move on, because some of you are thinking, all right, well, you're talking about survival, but where the heck are the zombies? <laughs> Right? Survival is one thing, but where the heck are the zombies? And um, you could certainly make that argument. Um, now, we don't have the zombie virus in Africa. We've got other ones, um, which are pretty bad and are all over the news. Um, this is a photo of a family vacation that we took to the caves where Ebola started. You know, it's kind of like a tourist destination. It's like Disney World. Um, <laughs> interesting in different ways than Disney World, but. Uh, I have to be honest, I didn't know that these were the caves where Ebola started before we went. I found out like afterwards. I'm really a crappy parent sometimes. Um, uh, but don't worry. I mean, my kids made it. They're absolutely fine. They're not showing any uh, signs of, of any problems whatsoever. Uh, 